Hey folks, how's it going? So today we have the Kinky Studio XM1 integrated amplifier here for review. So the Kinky Studio retails for about $2,400 USD. And it's a behemoth of an amplifier both in terms of performance and its size. Now looking at the design by itself, it's no means a light amplifier. It has a weight to it. And in terms of performance, it's rated at 215 watts per channel at 8 ohms. And so it was really designed to drive practically anything and that was their design goal. Um, to have neutrality and smoothness and vividness and all in one integrated amplifier. And the ability to drive really practically any speaker like I mentioned. Now, if you look at the design, the design is very simple. It is trying to retain as much information given to it from the source. And you can really tell that with the components used in this amplifier. Now it uses very high quality components. Um, it uses two toroidal transformers, one per each channel uh, rated at 300 VA. And so that is interesting because really a toroidal transformer per one amplifier is really enough. But they went over the board to have each one per channel. And the reason they did this was so that the left and the right channel does not interfere with one another. Now, as you can see here, the body is full aluminum and the volume knob is quite interesting in the fact that it's first of all very big and second, it uses R2R, resistor to resistor. Now, this was done for the precision of volume control. It has four inputs, three RCA and one XLR and it has two gain settings at 26 dB and 22 dB. Now the low gain setting at 22 dB is very good for horn speakers like the triangle or clip speakers or other sensitive speakers, whereas the high gain was really good for driving uh, difficult loads like the CAF LS50s. Now the Kinky Studio is very interesting in the fact that it has used very high quality parts in all of their circuits, including their circuit board which is gold plated PCB. And the designer behind this was actually involved in uh, military equipment in China. So that is very interesting to me in the fact that he has transferred some of the military technology into his audio equipments. Now whether it be translating into great sound, we'll see in a minute in my sound review. But looking at the quality parts of this integrated amplifier, it really speaks for itself in terms of its performance. So to turn the unit on, you have to press this button once and then it will take some time to warm up. And then to turn it off, you have to press it down for about five seconds until it shuts off. This is an only integrated amplifier meaning that it does not have any pre-outs. It only has four inputs. Although for me, I would rather prefer a pre-out rather than having four different inputs, this may not be a total deal breaker for most people. Now, looking at the sound quality of this integrated amplifier, really the quality component speaks for itself. Really, nothing really stands out. And I mean that in the most positive way possible. The highs are very extended, the sound stage is extremely large, the imaging is pinpoint, the mid bass has that authority and visceral impact, the mids are smooth and liquid, the high frequencies are reached to a point where it's just about right and doesn't get bright or sibilant. And overall sound signature is very neutral and balanced in my perspective. Now, what I mean by nothing stands out is that this amplifier really does everything so well in every perspective and it's such a great amplifier, especially for the price and I don't really like mentioning price in my reviews, but the price of this amplifier versus the performance is incredible. And one thing about this integrated amplifier in terms of sound characteristics is that it's really impacted a lot on the source that you give to it. 
And so if you give a high quality source to it, then it will do and perform to its top notch quality. And that goes vice versa. So if you feed poor source quality to it, you will really hear the dissection of the music quality and how it really kind of everything collapses. Now this really passed it every test that I threw at it um, from LS50s to horn speakers like the Triangle or Klipsch to even my floor standard JBLs. Um, this really drove it with such authority and smoothness. So whether it be horns or soft dome or even metal dome, this really drove it with such authority and smoothness that there was no fatigue, yet there was visceral impact in the mid bass and really extends down into the low frequencies with ease and comfort. So with that being said, the imaging was very much improved on all of the speakers that I put onto this uh, compared to a Toll or even other high-end amplifiers. Now, one thing that I found Kinky Studio does extremely well, however, if I had to choose, is the fact that it chooses to be very tonality correct. It has such a rich tonality and such great visceral impact in the strings and in the voicing of such instruments and female vocals and also male vocals that you really get the sense that they are in the room. Now, another thing that I really wanna point out is the fact that this unit is very good at separating the different instruments and voices. Even when I put this in such a small size room with some small monitors, I could really pinpoint the instruments within that space. And although it doesn't expand the sound stage unnaturally like some tube amplifiers, which some people may like, um, it does very correctly in the space it's given. Now the Kinky Studio really reminded me when I first heard the Dan Dex Dino amplifiers. Now the Dan Dex Dino amplifiers of course are very much more expensive than this unit and by no means I'm not comparing them. But what I want to get across here is that when I first heard the Dan Dex Dino amplifiers, it was very much impressive in the fact that everything was great. Um, if I were to really dissect and say, you know, this can improve or that can improve, um, I really had nothing to say in that regard. Everything was so well balanced, the bass, the mid bass, to all the frequencies extending. Um, I had no really uh, kind of caveat that I can pinpoint in terms of sound quality. And much like so, the Kinky Studio does something very similar in terms of being well balanced throughout the frequencies and really uh, doing well in all aspects. It's not really focused in the mid ranges like some tube amplifiers. It's not uh, really giving you a wow factor in the bass or in the high frequencies. It doesn't have like a coloration of sound that is very specific um, like to a tube amplifier, for example, and really nothing stands out because it's doing so well and so well balanced in all regard. And so what I really mean to say here for the sound review is the fact that it is a beast of an amplifier for the price it's asking. And I don't like to mention prices in my reviews, but I really must. It really is doing something that is very different uh, from other amplifiers in its price range. And so that's what I really want to get across. It does stand out in the price ranges of its performance. Um, however, in terms of sound, it really doesn't stand out because it doesn't have a coloration where it kind of forces the mid range or the high frequencies or even the bass region. Um, it is very well balanced and really smooth, vivid, uh, yet has pinpoint imaging. It is really a behemoth of an amplifier in terms of performance and in size. So there you have it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.